Um, just a, a word from Tarsis, because Tarsis would be here as well, actually, but he's um, on paternity leave with a, a new addition in his uh, in his family. So um, we have we have good news there as well. Um, but thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, to present um, this afternoon. Um, we're going to um, talk through, um, as uh, Peter explained, a little bit about the um, the way that things are, have been developing over the, the past few years. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the history um, and we'll try to focus more on the, the future and the way things are developing. Um, but one thing that is, is clear is that there is increasing importance being placed upon greenhouse gas emissions um, from the logistics sector. Um, and um, the, the, the real reason for that is that I think um, emissions from the transport sector in general are, are continuing to increase while um, other sectors are beginning to uh, to get their, their greenhouse gas emissions more under control and show a, a reducing pathway. Um, and that changes the balance and that means that more and more organisations are being asked to look at what their activities are and how they can um, reduce that. And I think the predictions for how um, transport and then within that logistics emissions and just the, the activity within the sector are also likely to grow in the future. Um, are showing increases when everybody is expecting decreases, and so uh, that is that is very much at the heart as to, as to why there is this focus, why more and more people are looking at um, at the sector at its greenhouse gas emissions, and I think that's that's key for Smart Freight Centre because it's really our core niche, what we've been working on for the last ten years, but also. Um, I think it then also gives you know, real relevance to this particular working group with Analys as well. And so what we've been doing is, is basically developing um, the, the, the standards that are, are used for not only calculating and reporting, but also passing those um, that information from partner to partner within the, the supply chain. And I think that's really where where this comes to the fore. Um, and then that information is used for the the tracking of emissions over time, because that's how we will um, know whether or not activities to to reduce emissions are actually being effective or not. Um, and that information needs to be shared not only with um, supply chain partners, but also with other. Um, elements of society with regulators, with investors, etc., and that's one of the points that we'll you know will will appear later in the presentation as well. And in spite of all the work that we've been doing, I do think that we are still um, communicating maybe with a, a relatively small proportion of the sector as a whole. And the third point on the current slide, where it talks about um, the just uh, accounting for greenhouse gases and logistics being a relatively new practice. I, I think it, it's it's a fair comment for um, many of the organisations that are out there, um, and the challenge does remain to how to engage with those who haven't yet um, been able to do so until now. So thinking back to um, to 2014 when um, Smart Freight Centre and the GLEC were formed, we were already building on some work that had been done in a, uh, a previous European Commission funded research project called COFRET. We were able to take that on, form a, a core of in, interested um, industry partners and basically build on that, building consensus, making sure that the industry buys into um, what we were doing, also building on um, what was already in the market so that um, we weren't, we were trying to avoid um, uh, reinventing the wheel. Uh, and I've already spotted that there's a, a typo in the in in the slide because um, we aren't yet at 2029. Um, we built basically built on the first um, black framework um, published in 2016. First, um, worked framework, with industry partners, um, and um, by 2019 we're able to um, uh, release the second version 
of the GLEC framework. And at the same time in, in 2019, we started the work um, to kick off a process through um, ISO procedures um, towards um, what is now known as ISO 14083. Um, that was published in March this year. Um, a very intense, detailed process to take the principles of the GLEC framework plus the previous um, European standard that dated back from 2012 and incorporate that and new knowledge into um, the formal standard um, ISO 14083. And then uh, just prior to the, the publication of ISO 14083 um, through to last week, um, we've both said then been working um, on the third version of the GLEC framework, which basically contains some updates, which we'll work our way through, um, but basically is intended to mirror ISO 14083, but come to that um, position really as a supporting document for um, the ISO standard because the ISO, um, it's a very, very detailed technical document um, and what we, what we think is that alongside that we need a more accessible guideline on the lines of, of what we've had with the previous versions of the GLEC framework there to, to, to really make sure that the, uh, the work, the good work that was done in the ISO working group can get out there and be picked up by as many people as possible. So we see the GLEC framework supporting um, the implementation of, of ISO 14083. The GLEC framework um, remains recognized by Greenhouse Gas Protocol. Um, it remains um, aligned and embedded within the CDP for its corporate reporting um, and at the base of the, the science-based targets initiative work on transport. Um, and in parallel, we're in, in process of um, kicking on um, updates to the, um, the science-based targets to bring them down to a, a 1.5 degree um, trajectory. We know that at least 150 multinationals and probably many more are using the GLEC framework because we make it available. We don't ask people um, to, to, to tell us they're using it. Um, we don't require to be an SFC member to use it, although if someone does become an SFC member, then we do ask them not only to use it, but to report to us. And it's also embedded in many um, calculation um, tools uh, and industry programs, etc. And that remains the case as well with the various recent updates. So in terms of what ISO 14083 is, it's a methodology standard. It covers greenhouse gases um, as a, a, a boundary um, and it covers uh, this from the perspective of a transport chain and I'll explain what that means shortly. Um, it covers both passenger transport and freight transport. So it's maybe more um, encompassing than um, SFC's typical remit, but it ensures then consistency between the calculations from both elements of the, the transport sector, but also where vehicles or vessels carry both passengers and freight at the same time. It doesn't come with its own verification guideline. So um, that is one of the reasons why we've been working separately to work, work towards um, an assurance standard. And it's one of the items that Anna will pick up later on. And it's worth noting that the existing European standard EN 16258 has now been withdrawn and is replaced by um, a, a SEN prefaced version of ISO 14083. In terms of um, how the ISO and the GLEC framework um, are aligned, um, it was very important for us to take the principles of the GLEC framework into ISO because we know that many regulators, including the European Commission, um, need something which has that formal recognition um, from something like ISO in order to be able to reference it within um, their uh, their legislation. They're more reluctant to take on board um, industry-based guidelines. At the same time, it's really important than, than any methodology that is um, implemented within regulations is workable for um, 
the industry. So that's a bit why we pressed on um, so um, quickly and keenly with the GLEC framework to make sure that, that um, those principles were there um, in time for the, the European or other legislation. Um, and um, the ISO standard, once it's written, like all ISO standards, it tends to stay fixed for a while. So the, the update process is um, every five years approximately. And I think it's worth noting that that will only happen if there is a demand to update it. Now, in the space of greenhouse gas emission accounting, five years is quite a long time because things seem to be developing relatively quickly. There's still new scientific knowledge coming through. Um, the request for broadening boundaries of what's in a calculation um, and how it's expressed um, are, are still you know, still coming. So there's a, a fair chance that there will be a demand in five years' time. And I think that's one of the areas where then the, the GLEC um, as a partnership and then the GLEC framework as the, uh, the outcome of those partnership discussions and other research work provides the flexibility to have dynamic discussions, test out ideas and develop um, content um, that could potentially feed into um, a revision of the, the um, ISO 1403 standard if, if requested. <clears throat> 